today. Two models, three different apps, one chance to get it right. GPT-5 just released earlier this week, and one of the things that they said they had updated was their UI design. I wanted to put it to the test. Could I create some simple little dashboards and see if the UI in GPT-5 is better than the UI in Claude Code? Today, I tested three different simple little apps using the same prompt in Claude Code and GPT-5. And then the best part is, I get to arbitrarily judge which model did it better. The answer, as the proverbial clickbait says, may surprise you. It actually did really surprise me. In the showdown between Claude Code and GPT-5, who did it better? Let's go find out. The plan. I've got Claude Code, which I've been using extensively and have found very impressive. And now I've got GPT-5, which I have not used at all. So this is my ChatGPT-5 unboxing video. So naturally I asked GPT-5 to give me some ideas for prompts that I could use to create simple UI heavy apps. It gave me three different ideas. So we're gonna run three dashboards, same prompt using Claude Code versus GPT-5. Now, Claude Code that I have only has access to Sonnet. I'm on the $20 a month plan. GPT-5, I'm also on the $20 a month plan, but GPT-5 is available to everyone, even the free tier. Theoretically, you should be able to run any of these prompts on any plan in ChatGPT. The rules. Okay, so I've got three prompts. We're gonna give the exact same prompt to Claude Code and GPT-5, one shot, and then I'll test it, see what it does. And then we get three chances to fix it or enhance it, the prompts. So we've got three simple apps. The first one is a dashboard for YouTube creators. The second app is a 12 week GitHub style heat map habit tracker. I love the idea of a habit tracker, kind of maybe interested in turning this into a real app for myself. And the last app is a gem game. Match three, things blow up, the row comes down. Bring back the old school gem game. All right, let's see what we got. First up, creator stats mini dashboard. All right, here's the prompt. Build a single self-contained index.html for a creator stats mini dashboard. Claude, you ready? Here it goes. I've got GPT-5 up and running and I'm gonna leave it in its normal mode. So this will decide whether it wants to put a little more thought into it or not. Same prompt goes in, see what it does. So it does look like it's thinking because it says I can get a quick answer, which implies that it is using the longer thinking model to create the code. All right, we have Claude code on the left and ChatGPT on the right. So like looking at day and night, really, I, you know, I have to say, I think I actually kind of prefer this view. Okay, so some immediate differences. Interestingly, the Claude code, and I know this is just mocked up data, but it's still data. It's showing actual number of views. It's got numbers, click through rate. There are literally nothing is numbered over here. So that's actually, I'm gonna say super unhelpful. I gotta say, I think Claude code kind of wins on this one. That's kind of a surprise. And again, I am not even using Claude Code's best model. I don't have access to their to their Opus model. I believe I'm still using Sonnet. Yeah, I'm using Sonnet because that's all I have access to. Opus 4.0 was considered the sort of premier coding model. I don't even have access to that. Opus 4.1 just released earlier this week. I definitely don't have access to that. So it's a little bit surprising, but I would say Claude Sonnet kind of won over ChatGPT5. All right, now I do get a chance to give each one a correction. So I definitely could give ChatGPT a chance to redeem itself. Let's give that a shot. Uh, I'm not seeing any data labeled on any of these graphs. I, I kind of need the graphs and the charts to have at least some type of data on them. All right, looks like that is done. Let's try that again. That is much better. <laughs> okay, so now ChatGPT has labeled all of the data points, which actually I do much prefer. So now I need to give Claude code the same opportunity, don't I? Yeah. All right, so all I told Claude is, can you add more data labeling to the graphs and charts? I'd like to see a little bit more data on those things. And it went and did a slew of work. So let's see what it's got. So that also, <laughs> that added a ton of information. That is maybe too much information, but 
Honestly, this is a more helpful chart now. It's got X and Y axes. It's got every bar chart is labeled. Uh, now I can walk through my various videos and get actually different data. So that's helpful. Oh, look, and we've got hover. That's nice. We've got hover callouts on both of them. All right, so I would say they both did a great job. I think Claude won a little bit right out of the gate once I gave GPT-5 a chance to update. Perfectly happy with that. Otherwise, I'd say they're comparable. It's, uh, you know, maybe a matter of what your preference is. Although I will say I found this pie chart was is just more informative. All right, next. Next up, a GitHub style heat map habit tracker. What is that, you may ask? I had to ask the same question. This. Apparently on GitHub, when you contribute a lot, it keeps track of your contribution. And I believe the darker the color, yeah, the darker the green, the more you're contrib contributing that day. So this could be used obviously for GitHub, but you could use something like this to track your own daily habits. The amount of exercise, minutes of meditation, ounces of water, whatever you're keeping track of. I pasted in the text from GPT-5. We'll kick that off. And over here in GPT-5, we are going to enter the same prompt. Build a single self-contained index.html file, no external libraries that display plays a GitHub style habit heat map for the past 12 weeks. We're gonna kick that off as well, and we're gonna let them both run. All right, they are both done. Uh, I do see one small problem with GPT-5. I can't see anything. Claude code looks like there is something here. Uh, I can hover. The, uh, the text is slightly off. It's slightly unreadable. Okay, and I can keep adding. All right, so let's see if we can figure out what's going on with GPT-5. All right, well, that's working on that. I'm gonna go back to Claude. When I hover, the uh, the words are not lined up with the black background box. They're offset just a little bit, so it's very difficult to read what that hover text says. Oh, it looks like he's done, and yes. All right, so it does have a small problem when I go up too far, kind of runs out of the box, but uh, that's definitely fixed. And if I wanted to log today, all right, great. It's still letting me log. Looks perfect. Meanwhile, all right, GPT-5 finally came back and it did have an error message. So I might have jumped the gun the first time around. I fed the error code back into the chat and I'm gonna let it try to fix it. All right, let's try that. Well, here we go. Okay, we're closer. All right, so that's error number two that we are working on. Cannot set properties of null. All right, this is not looking good for GPT-5, I gotta say. Ah, <laughs> oh, that one's on me, says GPT-5. Let's try it again. Hey! All right, so that did take three back and forths to get GPT-5 running, but it is up and running. So again, we've got Claude on the left and GPT-5 on the right, and they're hovering. Hovering is actually better. It doesn't cut off at the top like Claude does, and can I log today? Yes. So over here, Claude does display a message, daily goal reached. That was not part of the prompt, but a nice little touch. Uh, we don't get anything like that over on GPT-5, but they do both have streaks and they have created their own data sets. That's why the data is different between the two. So that's fine. This key maybe leaves a little something to be desired. Zero equals white, arrow four equals dark green. I could intuit that, but this over here on Claude is, um, that's just a little bit, a little bit more helpful. All right, so it's number two that goes to Claude. Got one more to go. All right, next up, the gem game. I'm most excited about this one because I do like playing a good gem game. All right, new chat. This is the prompt that GPT-5 gave me for a gem game. Six by six grid of colored gems. Clicking a group of two plus adjacent same color gems removes them. Add points, remaining gems fall down to fill gaps. I think we've all seen gem games. So you get the idea. Let's do it. All right, probably a single HTML page is maybe not the very best example of this, but this is what GPT-5 recommended for me to use <laughs> to test its own capabilities. So I just went with it. All right, they're both back. Uh, I believe there was something about a 60 second timer. This is not exactly what I had in mind, but I do think this is what the description said. So, uh, I don't quite know why that didn't work. I'm sort of confused. All right, 
time's up. I think the timer's about to run out over here. I've got sounds coming from somewhere. Hmm. Coming over from Claude. I, I don't need it to just constantly beep when it's done. All right, so what am I seeing? There is a lot more detail in Claude code. We've just got squares. We do have sounds. I will say, uh, so this appears to be getting the entire, everything that's adjacent, if it's the same color. This does not. And that's irritating. So this one isn't getting like a group of three if they're all together. So like, why isn't that? Why can't I click on that? That's a group of two. That's a group of two. I don't understand. <laughs> that didn't make any sense to me. Let's turn off the sound. All right, and play again. Uh, what is this guy doing? Group of one, no. Two diagonal, no. Two across, three across, two. Wow, anything touching, sort of. I don't think I understand the rules of this game completely. <laughs> Maybe if I have the games explain the rules to me as they understand it, it will make more sense. So I'm gonna use my fix for that. Can you add a, an option to explain the rules of the game? For example, what configuration of blocks will result in clearing the board? Yeah, do I diagonals count? Does it have to be more than two? Will it clear three in a row or only two in a row? I'm, I'm unclear on the rules of clearing the board and I need a little bit of direction, please. All right, so I'm gonna ask Claude for that. All right, and I'm gonna paste in the exact same thing and ask GPT-5 to, to give me some clarity on that game as well. Click on it to see concise guidance plus tiny visual examples, valid lines, L-shapes, and an invalid diagonal. I can't wait to hear what that is. All right, so over in Claude, we've got a question mark button. All right, so Claude is done. What are the rules? You need at least two adjacent gems of the same color to remove them. Adjacent only. Gems must touch horizontally or vertically, up, down, left, right. Diagonal connections don't count, all right? And then we've got some, they've got scoring, some examples. These count. 60 seconds, chain reactions. All right, that looks pretty good. Time's running out. Ooh, dark mode, nice. Meanwhile, what has GPT-5? GPT-5 is still working, all right. Quick answers. Diagonals don't count. Clear any connected group of two or more. All right, where, wait, well, wait a sec. Also shown in game under rules. Hmm, well, I don't, I don't really see the rules. Oh, GPT-5, how I wanted you to work. So I tried to run GPT-5's code again and literally nothing showed up. Told it I, I can't see anything, doesn't appear to be working. And I believe it is literally rewriting the entire thing. All right, says it is fixed. Replace the entire canvas with a fully fixed HTML file. All right, it is up and running. Uh. I have a high contrast button. I can mute the sound that was requested, but there is still literally no rules definition. So it's a fail. Oh, GPT-5, I had such high hopes for you. Still a fun game though. Okay, so I have to say, um, as much as I am disappointed that GPT-5 couldn't quite get me the rest of the way there, I actually do pref still prefer the way the game plays over on GPT-5. That's closer to how I would expect it, but boy, did it have some problems getting there. This one, you know, it, it plays fine. There's literally uh, no complaints because I did not specify everything adjacent, but that is more what I would expect to see in a game like this. And the fact that it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, like I think three in a row should disappear, but it just doesn't. I think it actually maybe broke it. Wow, this one, <laughs> I think maybe nobody won on this one. So that was definitely surprising. And I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of disappointing to be honest. I did expect more from GT GPT-5 right out of the gate. I sort of also feel like GPT-5 said that they had made huge advancements in UI design, and I don't think I would agree with any of that. So, couple things. I may have inadvertently made these examples too simple, 
well, ChatGPT might have made these examples too simple. I came in, I asked GPT-5, I said, hey, I wanna test some simple UI dashboards, GPT-5 versus Claude Code. Can you give me some ideas? And it gave me these ideas and the prompts to use. So maybe there's some strength that could come in if I was making slightly more complicated apps, but I do feel like if you can't do the simple things well, asking for the more complicated things, like what's the point? I, I kind of need you to be able to do both. All right, so that means for me, I will probably be sticking with Claude code for the most part, but I definitely think that I will use GPT-5 maybe for some slightly more complicated apps in the future, just out of curiosity. <laughs> maybe it's me, in other words, I don't know. I will say I had to go back and forth with GPT-5 several times in almost every situation. Single shot coding, definitely not. I think in the YouTube dashboard, that was true. In the other ones, I had to go back multiple times to get it even to work. So from that sense, GPT-5, that was probably the, my biggest surprise was that it still was just a little bit buggy. Maybe the real takeaway from this is Cloud Code, you've done a great job. You have raised the bar so high that that's what I have come to expect is kind of excellence the first time with maybe a little bit of tweaking. So really, if you had asked me two months ago to try out GPT-5, I would have been stunned with the results, honestly. So no shade on them, just we've got something that works so well, it's kind of hard to compare the two. Well done, Claude and GPT-5. I'm gonna keep trying. All right, interesting results. For sure not what I expected. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.